Hello everyone, this is Sen from Sen Invest. I have exciting news for you today. This week, Bitscap emailed me saying that their dollar cost averaging or DCA bot is ready for use in beta mode. Let's dive into this bot and do a setup today. First, let's talk about what dollar cost averaging is. According to Investopedia, dollar cost averaging refers to the practice of systematically investing equal amounts spaced out over regular intervals regardless of price. The goal of dollar cost averaging is to reduce the overall impact of volatility on the price of the target asset as the price will likely vary each time one of the periodic investments is made. The investment is not highly subject to volatility. Dollar cost averaging aims to avoid making the mistake of making one lump sum investment that is poorly timed with regard to asset pricing. For example, going all in during the 2017-2018 Bitcoin bubble. So here on Bitscap, we can see that I have a Bitcoin US dollar dollar cost averaging robot set up. However, the bot profit is negative. Why is that? Let's take a look. So we can easily see by looking at the transactions that there are only buys here. There are no sells. Profit cannot be realized until the bot makes a sale. And the fees here have added up to 11 cents, which is the amount of my loss. So let's walk through setting up a new dollar cost averaging robot on Bitscap today. First, click on Start New Bot, then Dollar Cost Averaging Bot, which you'll see is in beta mode. This is just a disclaimer stating that the product is in testing or beta. And so some of the features may not be working as expected. Okay, we're going to accept that. The first of five steps here is to select the coin pair. Today, I'm going to be working with Solana USD. So here we can see Solana is trading just under $100. So it makes a good example coin for showing you some of the percentages that go into setting up this bot. Let's click on long here. Short, you see, is not currently available. This is telling me that I currently have $304 available balance to trade with. So let's go click continue. The second step here is whether to choose to instantly buy my first order or to use indicators. So I'm going to select indicators over here. This is something new that I haven't seen with Bitscap before. You'll see here that the first indicator is the MACD. What exactly is the MACD? According to Investopedia, MACD is the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. Here, the key takeaways of the MACD are that the MACD is calculated by subtracting the 26 period exponential moving average, or EMA, from the 12 period EMA. MACD triggers technical signals when it crosses above to buy or below to sell its signal line. The speed of crossovers is also taken as a signal of a market that is overbought or oversold. MACD helps investors understand whether bullish or bearish movement in the price is strengthening or weakening. Now, let's look at MACD on a chart. So here's trading view. I have Solana USD pulled up and my MACD is on the bottom here. So if we click on the MACD, we get this window which shows us the signal line is the orange and the MACD line is the blue. So we are looking for the MACD or the blue line to cross over or under the orange line to give our signal. The 12 refers to the fast length, the 26 refers to the slow length, and the nine is simply uh, for signal smoothing. So here's an example of the blue line crossing over the orange line. This would indicate a buy signal. Here's an example of the blue line crossing under the orange line. This would be a sell signal. So let's click here on edit to edit the indicators we wish to use. If I click a plus, I'm going to see another indicator is available, which is the RSI. So what is the RSI? Let's learn about it on Investopedia. RSI stands for the Relative Strength Index. 
The relative strength index is a popular momentum oscillator developed in 1978. RSI provides technical traders with signals about bullish and bearish price movement and is often plotted beneath the graph of an asset's price. An asset is usually considered overbought when the RSI is above 70% and oversold when it is below 30%. So the formula for calculating RSI is to take 100 and subtract 100 divided by 1 plus the average gain over the average loss. And here is an example that is worked out. So we'll see here that this is my RSI indicator. You'll note here that there are two lines here. So this is the 70 line and this here is the 30. So anything below the 30 would be oversold, so we take that as a signal to buy. And anything above the 70 line is taken to be a signal to sell because it would be overbought. Let's double click on RSI, see what's going on. So here we can see that the moving average length is 14, which corresponds to what we see in Bitscap. And the style here shows us that the RSI here is purple, the purple line here. So we can see that I'm unable to add the RSI to my list of indicators. That's because the projected sum buy signals for the last 30 days is actually zero. So I wouldn't get any buys with this current setup. So let's modify it. So here H would be hours, so these would be the bars that are used to generate the signals. So now I'm going to try 30 minutes, I'm still not getting anything, now I'm going to take it down to 15 minutes, now I'm going to take it down to 5 minutes, and we can see now that I got a projected sum of buys of 8, so let's go with the setting of 5. Now my next indicator here, which is also the last indicator, there are only three, is the stochastic. And that is showing the settings of 14, 3, and 3. Let's take a look at what the stochastic does. Investopedia tells us that the stochastic oscillator is a popular technical indicator for generating overbought and oversold signals. It is a popular momentum indicator first developed in the 1950s. Stochastic oscillators tend to vary around some mean price level since they rely on an asset's price history. Here's the formula for the stochastic oscillator here. The percent %K is simply the current value of the oscillator. C is the most recent closing price. L14 is the lowest price traded on the previous 14 trading sessions. And H14 is the highest price traded during the same 14-day period. So here, the stochastic is taken to be overbought if the reading is above 80, and oversold if the reading is under 20. Let's see examples of this on TradingView. So if we click on stochastic here, we'll see that the 14 is for length, and the threes are for smoothing. Anything above the 80 line here, would be overbought, so that's a sell signal, and then anything under 20 would be oversold, so that would be our buy signal. So here we can see I'm unable to add, I'm also unable to add the stochastic because the projected sum of buys is zero with the current settings. While the indicators are more powerful when used together, there will be fewer instances when all three of them align, so we need to account for this when selecting our time intervals. Let's take it down to 30 minutes, let's take it down to 15, let's take it down to 5. Ah, I'm getting something now. So here, let's add it in. And just for consistency, let's also put the MACD on 5. But here, I'm not getting anything for the MACD on 5. Let's take the MACD down to 1. Ah, we got something. So that's doing it every 1 minute. Let's put it at one minute, and let's put this one at one minute. So, over the past 30 days, the combination of these three indicators with a time interval of one minute have given four buy signals. Let's click on Confirm. Yep, 
Now for step three. Here we choose the amount that we want to put in for each order. If I try to make it any smaller, I get an error message saying that I need to put at least 20. Okay, so let's go with 20. So here, if we look at a chart over Solana, we can see that prices pretty much bottomed out around $75. Let's take this into account when setting up the number of orders and the step percentage for our grid. We go to edit orders. Let's put in some more orders here. You'll see the lowest buy price is 95. So let's add some more, see what happens. So 10, 10 orders at $20 per order would be $200, which I'm comfortable with deploying at this moment. So let's increase the percentage, which is simply increasing the spacing between the grid lines. Notice as I increase the percentage, the lowest buy price steadily drops as well. When I reach 2.5%, the lowest buy price is right around $75. Let's confirm. Our next step deals with taking profit from the bot. Here we can use indicators, which are the same ones that I use for the buy signals, to also generate the sell signals to get out of the trades. We click on options. We can see that if the profit is too low, we can skip the signal. So here it's saying make me 10% profit before exiting. We can also increase that amount or decrease. So you'll see that this blue line here shows a minimum profit when dollar cost averaging is used. If we click on a fixed price here, this puts us at 10% above the current price of around $100 or $110. I don't want to use the indicators to close the bot, however. So let's go back and let's just use a percentage to take profit. Here, let's put in 10% using a fixed price, and that's going to put my take profit at about $110. Let's confirm. So now we see my take profit is 10% and my take profit type is fixed. We can see here that if all the orders get executed according to this grid, I would stand to make around $60. Let's continue to our final step here, stop loss. So stop loss simply deals with the conditions to exit a losing trade and optionally stop the bot if the price goes negative. So here I'm going to choose exit and wait. Crypto is very volatile and unpredictable at times, but Solana is a coin that I believe in, so I don't mind buying the dip and actually holding more if need be. So I'm going to choose a fixed percentage here, and let's keep the default setting of 33.7. This is what I would stand to lose if the price actually decreased to this amount. Let's confirm. Here we have some additional options which deal with trailing stop to move the stop loss following the price and the drawdown limit to limit cumulative losses. However, I'm not interested in using those settings today. Now we can preview the bot. So here we can see a summary of the settings that we selected today. Let's take a quick look to make sure they all look correct. So here, I'd actually like my first order amount to be a bit less. So let's go back and change that really fast. Okay, so $20, which is the minimum for my first order, using the three indicators to generate the buy signal. Number of orders, 10, step 2.5%. I'm going to take profit at 10%, and I'm going to set a stop loss at about 33.7%. And risk reduction, 
Although BitScap says this is optional, I didn't see a way to not use risk reduction. And then uh, if I were to confirm this, the bot would then be deployed. So that's it for deploying a dollar cost averaging robot on BitScap. So BitScap also offers an excellent article on setting up the dollar cost averaging bot with in-depth information on each setting. It's very helpful. So if you'd like to try using BitScap and their dollar cost averaging bot, but the settings look a little daunting, I have great news for you. If you purchase a qualifying subscription of BitScap using my affiliate link, I'll give you a free one-to-one -one live training session on setting up trading robots. If you like today's content, please remember to subscribe to my channel and click the like button. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you and see you next time.